we've been together now for so very long All in all it's been the best of times Our relationship is like singing the greatest song We could sing it for the rest of our lives But even the longest songs don't
miss you a lot, and I, I don't know what else to do. It's really sad without you. Repeating the chorus, <laughs> repeating the chorus over and over and over and over and over and over again. <laughs> Metaphorically speaking, it's a symbolism. Uh, it's the way I like to title things. I like to give you everything that you need to know. I hate songs that don't tell you. Like, hey Jude, what's that about? I don't know. <laughs> if I titled it, it would be, hey Julian Lennon, one day you're gonna grow up and get out of your father's shadow. <laughs> but he didn't. So, uh, guys, uh, I wrote a show about breakups because, uh, all in all, I've been on one or the other end of about 22 breakups in my life. Uh, yeah, so I don't know if I'm an expert, but I've got something to say about it. And one thing I say is that it never got easier. Uh, so, it's really painful. Most people tend to go through it, and I, being a comedian, uh, I thought, well, if you throw maybe a little humor at something, maybe you can make it just a little less painful. So, uh, please enjoy Let's Break Up, a solo journey. Hey, this is Janine. Leave a message. <laughs> hey, Janine. Hey, it's Chaz. Uh, I know you said don't call anymore, but I've been drinking, and so I called. <laughs> And I found your sweater in my car. And I know you said uh, don't contact you any under, under any circumstances uh, because we're broken up and you don't want to hear from me. But I seem to recall you enjoying the sweater and I thought this was a good time to break that rule. <laughs> anyway, I just, I can bring it to you or like you can come get it or I can leave it in the mailbox. But I live in an apartment, so you'd have to have the keys. So that's not going to work. So just, I don't know. I, I really, okay, I'm going to level with you. Uh, this is an excuse to talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just, I got drinking, and I was out with the boys, and, and they wanted to go to a strip club, and I didn't, I don't care about going to strip clubs anymore because I just kind of want to be with you. And... And so, like, I'm grown up now, so we should get back together. <laughs> I'm mature, as evidenced by my drunk calling you. <laughs> well, anyway, your sweater still smells like you. That's creepy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, if you don't call me back and you don't want the sweater, or you do, and you just, it's not worth it to you to call me back to get it, so, okay, well, here's something for you. If, if you don't call me back and get it, I'm just going to keep sniffing it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, as I said, I've been part of a lot of breakups, one of which I'd like to tell you about now. Uh, in college, uh, I dated a girl, and at the time, she was the longest relationship I ever had. And her name was Kayla, and uh, we, don't worry, she's not here, she won't, she won't mind. Uh, she, uh, so her and I were together, and um, we were both fundamentalist Christians at the time. Uh, so uh, we also lost our virginity to each other, which if you know anything about being a fundamentalist Christian, doesn't go together. Uh, so uh, long story short, uh, we went about six months without doing it, and then we did it. And uh, this was the process. We did it. We're like, God, that was amazing. Let's pray. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a bit. <laughs> That's exactly how it happened. It was like, God, we're sorry. We totally screwed up. We're not going to do it again. 
Next night, we would do it again, and then we would pray. This went on for months. Uh, and uh, so I eventually I broke up with her because I realized that I was a different person uh, after a year and a half than I was when I started the relationship. And she, I'm not saying she wasn't different, but she still wanted a lot of the same things. She wanted to have kids and live in the suburbs of Austin, Texas. And, you know, like, that was her ideal life. And I was like, I kind of want to leave Texas and go pursue comedy because I, I don't like myself. And, uh, <laughs> and, and when I realized that we wanted different things, I, I, went, I, I broke up with her and it was one of the hardest things ever. And she called me a week after we broke up and she was like, hey, do you want to come over and fuck me? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> so I did. And then afterwards, I was like, why are we doing this? And she said, well, we lost our virginity to each other, and I'm too miserable to start dating again, so why don't we just keep hooking up, because I'm going to be miserable, at least I'll get some orgasms out of it. And I'm like, that is so psychologically healthy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do that. And so we did for about three months until I got a phone call from her that I assumed was a booty call, and it wasn't. She called me and uh, I was like, hey, and she was like, hey, I just wanted to let you know, uh, I just downed a bunch of pills with some wine and uh, I don't want to live anymore. So I got in the car and I rushed over and I forced her to go to the hospital and they pumped her stomach and she was fine. She lived. Uh, but then I kind of had the, ironically, the come to Jesus moment where I said, uh, I said, I don't think we should see each other anymore because I don't, I think part of the reason you did this was because we were still hooking up. And so I never had to, so I cut off all ties and I haven't seen her talk to her since, but uh, I heard she's doing fine. I heard she got married and is actually living in the suburbs of Austin with two kids, so good for her. Uh, she, uh, no ill will or anything, uh, but you know, it was like one of the, probably the most traumatic times of my life. And uh, that was kind of the beginning of the end for a different relationship I was in. <laughs> God, uh, it's me, Rich. Um, you know that. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I need to talk, and not one of our normal, like, I do all the talking kind of things, but kind of need a, a dialogue here. So if you're not too busy, if you could maybe talk back a little bit. God, I, I really need to hear you. Hey. <laughs> hey. Sorry I've been so quiet. I just. I was just a little embarrassed. <laughs> Why were you embarrassed? The whole suicide attempt, ending your longest relationship ever. That all really sucks, man. And I, just, I just didn't know what to say about it, so I just stayed quiet. I should have done something, and I'm, I'm really sorry for all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, man, I don't want to sound like an asshole, but you're, you're omnipotent, omniscient, you created the universe. I was kind of hoping for a little bit more. Yeah, I've, I've really been slacking. And it's not just me. I mean, God, we got famines, droughts, tsunamis, seven seasons of the Kardashians. Like, <laughs> you're not even trying. I don't know. Ever, ever since I had a kid, life got hectic. Things <laughs> just got busy, you know? Yeah. Well, anyway, that's not what I wanted to talk to you about. Look, it, I've got something I, I really need to say to you. Oh, no, you're not gonna... Yeah, look, it's not you, it's me. <laughs> I just... I, I don't I don't think you're out there doing the stuff you promised, and I, I don't know if I can be with you anymore. <laughs> me, damn it. Me, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I really should have seen this one coming. God, it's just... I just, I just don't, I don't think we can be together. Is it another god? Is that it? Zoroaster, <laughs> <laughs> Vishnu, Thor? Thor? <laughs> is it Allah? Is it that guy? Is it dick? <laughs> no, it's not another god. It's, it's really me. I, I just kind of need to be religiously single for a little while. Are, are, you, are you saying you want to be an atheist? No, I... I don't want to be an atheist. I didn't want to lose my hair, but <laughs> I don't think I have a choice. <laughs>
This really sucks. <laughs> I, I failed. Look, I'm not saying I am an atheist. I'm saying what I need is to go out in the world and see it without you for a little while. And just and maybe I'll decide that I want a God in my life, and maybe that God will be you. I don't know, but I, I really need to just kind of experience things first. Do you understand? Yeah, I mean, I totally get it. I can be a bit demanding sometimes, and yeah, yeah high maintenance with the whole non-sex before marriage thing. I don't know. I, I'm not perfect, is what I'm saying. But well, we had some good times together, right? Sure, we had some great times. Remember that mission trip to Florida? That was really fun. Yeah. Or or the uh, time that you went to Young Life Camp. And you had to sleep in a freezing cold cabin. Yeah. Then you wound up sleeping in the van instead. It was a much warmer. But yeah. oh, oh, what about the songs you used to sing to me? Yeah. I yeah. miss the songs. Yeah. You have a good voice. Thanks. Thanks, God. I... <laughs> Look, I, I don't regret any of those times. I mean, those experiences made me who I am, and I'm thankful for them, and I look at them fondly, but I just, they made me who I am now, and who I am now. I don't want to sound desperate, but. Is there anything I can do to change your mind? <laughs> yeah. Don't let anyone go to bed hungry again. Stop droughts. Stop wars. Smite Nickelback out of existence. <laughs> anything to prove that you're actually giving a damn about us. That would be great. Um, I'm real sorry, buddy, but I, I can't do any of that. I know, God. And I, I don't think it's your fault. I don't think you're real. I think you kind of been more like an imaginary friend to me for the last seven years, which is really hard for me because every single decision I've made has involved you in some way, and I really thought that you were watching out for me and that I would. <sighs> I'm real sad now. <laughs> yeah, me too. You know what you should do? You should go on vacation. You should remember when you appeared in some toast? That was huge. <laughs> that went viral like a kitten video. You should do something like that. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I finally get around to writing another book. Maybe something a little more clear this time. <laughs> I really hope you do, God. I I wish you the best, but. I don't think you're there, and I think I gotta stop talking to you. Goodbye, God. Alright, cool. Um, <laughs> Uh, there's no real course to bump in on that, so I just started the beginning. Uh, I want to do a little improv for you, if you know me. Uh, that's what I'm kind of famous for. Uh, I'm not famous, but... <laughs> to any degree that anyone would know me, improv would be the thing they would associate. So, uh, it's an improv game. You probably play it yourself, but I'm going to play it now for you, uh, which is kind of scary, because I just put this in the show. Uh, so, are you going to give me an object, and I'm going to break up with you inspired by that object. So, if you give me a light bulb, I might say, ah, it's not you, it's me. You just don't turn me on anymore, right? Yeah. They're going to be that good. So, uh, can I get uh, any, any object? Maybe leotard. Something. What's that? Leotard. A leotard. Great. Uh, it's, it's not you, it's me. Uh, you're just kind of leotarded. <laughs> uh, can I get uh, some over here? How about a, uh, give me something that you would get as a gift for Christmas. Socks. What's that? Coal? Oh, alright, cool. Um, it's not you, it's me. I'm into renewable energy. Uh, so, uh, someone from the back, give me, how about a, a subject that you studied in college? Maybe like an elective course or something. Anatomy. Anatomy, cool. And I'll take an accent. Give me an accent. Let's fuck with it. Great. Ukrainian. French? French? Great. Uh, it's not you, it's me. I don't care for your anatomy. Alright, cool. <laughs> Uh, one breakup I had uh, was with someone who was actually my fiance, and uh, yeah, uh, 
that that was fun. And uh, <laughs> but the breakup wasn't the thing I want to talk about. The thing I want to talk about was the actual proposal because we both knew on the day that I proposed that I shouldn't have proposed, she shouldn't have said yes. <laughs> we did anyway, and then we stayed together for a year. Uh, well, after that. Uh, so, and uh, I'll give you the description that I normally give to people because the, then you go, oh, uh, it was on top of Cadillac Mountain in Bar Harbor, Maine, and we had at sunset, and we had lobsters afterwards, and you're like, damn, uh, <laughs> except that uh, like three days before it happened, uh, we started getting, in, we got into like a fight, and I just it kind of dawned on me like, shit, I don't want to spend the rest of my life with this person. And unbeknownst to me, she was thinking the same thing. So we both did it because we, I don't know why. And uh, so kind of, here's how it went. Uh, will, you, will you marry me? <laughs> yeah. Let's hug. <laughs> and if it had been a movie, there would have been a close-up on my face and her face. It would have looked something like this. <laughs> uh, so anyway, when she finally, uh, she finally ended it, which she was younger than me, and she made the more mature choice. Like, I wouldn't end it. Like, and, but I was doing a lot of stand-up comedy at the time, and uh, the breakup definitely affected my stand-up. Enjoy. <laughs> Alright, keep it going for your other comics. Excellent. Oh, welcome to the Chuckle Hut, everybody. Thanks for coming to the open mic. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, I broke up with my girlfriend recently. <laughs> I'm just kidding. She broke up with me. <laughs> Don't feel bad. Don't feel bad. Gives me more time to spend with my true love. Self-loathing, huh? <laughs> you know, I figure if a girl's gonna break up with me, she should at least have the decency to do it over a walkie-talkie. You know what I'm saying? Because that gives me the upper hand. She'll like be talking, it'll be all garbled, and be like, and I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, babe, I can't hear you. You're breaking up. <laughs> she is. Uh, you know, you know your relationship really isn't going to rebound uh, if it happens over a walkie-talkie because uh, it's, you have to hear it twice. It's like, I said it's over. Over. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, folks. Uh, she wasn't my girlfriend, she was my fiance. There's only two ways to end an engagement. Guess which mine was. Yep. I'm like Gollum, no rings, huh? <laughs> My precious! <laughs> so, um, at least when Gollum got real depressed over that, he lost weight. So. <laughs> <laughs> no fellowship for my ring. Got no place to stick with two towers. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I only have one tower. <laughs> it's more of a hobbit hunt, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> he knows. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, yeah. There's a there's there's a, usually you end an engagement at a church in front of your friends and family. She decided to end it at a Chili's, <laughs> which worked out great for me because I want my baby back, baby, back, baby. Back, baby, back, baby, back, baby. <laughs> Not the ribs. I just want her back. <laughs> If you're going to break up with me at a chain restaurant, at least have the decency to do it at an olive garden. Gives me the chance to try and win you back, you know? They're like, oh, you're going to break up with me? Well, sit back down. We're not leaving until I'm done eating, and this pasta bowl is never ready. <laughs> Sixteen more breadsticks. We got issues to work out. <laughs> Plus, at Olive Garden, when you're there, you're like family. And then maybe they wouldn't have looked at me so weird when I started sobbing uncontrollably. <laughs> <laughs> I wish these were jokes. <laughs> don't, don't feel bad for me. I like being single. I just celebrated being single the other night with craft singles. 
All 64 slices. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> and I'm lactose intolerant. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> I like to hurt myself. <laughs> hey, but you know, there's one advantage. Let me ask you a philosophical question. The lactose intolerant man farts in his living room and there's no girlfriend around to complain. Does it still smell? <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> Usually I dig my own brand, but even that was grossing me out. <laughs> I'm so lonely. <laughs> No, I'm so lonely. How lonely are you? I'm so lonely I bought a volleyball just to have a friend. <laughs> I'm so desperate. How desperate are you? So desperate I gave a homeless woman a sandwich for a hug. She said it wasn't worth the sandwich. <laughs> I'm so sad. How sad are you? I'm so sad that every morning I wake up and I don't even understand why I'd get out of bed and do anything because it just doesn't seem like there's anything to get up for, but maybe a little more sad to lay in bed, so that's why I do it. You guys have been great. <laughs> If you guys want to hang out with me after my set, I'll be the one over at the bar drinking by myself. <laughs> beating myself up internally. Life's over. Over. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you for spinning.